When Penny asked me if I wanted to rent an apartment with her, I agreed, despite her ASMR obsession. We'd been friends since our freshman year of college, and I doubted that I would find another roommate on such short notice. The spring semester was just about to begin, and I didn't want to either go back to the dorms or pay for a place of my own. This left me with Penny, who has so many idiosyncrasies that she makes even boisterous TV characters like Sheldon Cooper look wooden in comparison. When I say that Penny is obsessed with ASMR, I mean she lives for that stuff. Every evening she returned to her apartment from class, she locked herself in a room and watched the menagerie of tingle videos. At first, I thought this was weird. I thought that we were going to be hanging out more now that we live together. But after a few weeks of her shutting herself away in a room, it didn't bother me anymore. I just did my best to push her out of my mind and do my homework, or watch Netflix. Then one evening, I awoke to the sight of her standing in my doorway. Her eyes were glued to my face as if my features were sculpted from gold. The intense look in her brown eyes nearly scared me to death, and I instinctively kicked off my covers. Jesus, Penny, I said, voice breathless. What are you doing here? If I wouldn't have been so scared at the time, I would have realized that the real question to ask started with the phrase, how long? You were talking in your sleep, she said, or whispering rather. I wasn't sure if you were awake or not. Well, I am now. My voice came up more aggressive than I would have liked, given my aversion towards conflict. Luckily, Penny is also easygoing and let the comments echo into the walls without escalating the situation. I've talked to my sleep ever since I was a kid. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you. I just thought it sounded nice is all. She then turned around and disappeared into the living room without saying another word. A few days went by, and I didn't think much about this incident. Until that Friday, I awoke from a nap to find her sitting right below me on the couch. Her face was no more than five feet away from mine, and the pleasure plastered to her lips and eyes as they scanned my flesh almost looked carnal. I felt like the penny that I had come to know and like had been replaced by a smiling Annabelle doll. I bolted up on the couch and fired daggers at her with my eyes. Are you watching me while I sleep? I said. Of course not, she said. I was just leaning down to pick up the remote. She brandished the remote in her hand. You must have kicked it off the armrest while you were sleeping. I was about to put it back on the coffee table and go to my room. But then I heard you whispering in your sleep again. Your voice sounded so peaceful that it made me pause for a moment. Next time you hear me whispering in my sleep, keep moving, I said, not caring if my voice sounded aggressive anymore. It makes me uncomfortable. This is the second time this week that I've caught you watching me. She shrugged her shoulders. At least it hasn't been three times. She rose to her feet and sauntered off to her room, leaving me there on the couch to unpack the deeper meaning behind such an ominous statement. It wasn't until I woke in my bed two days later to the sight of her ear no more than three inches away from my mouth that I finally lost it. The image of her hovering over me like that, face racked with pleasure, had just been too horrifying. I could practically see her skin tingling from my breath in her ear and felt like vomiting. The sight of her earwax-covered ear canal only intensified my nausea. I slithered out from under the covers and then jumped to my feet. What the hell is wrong with you, Penny? I said. Based on the wrinkles in her clothes, I could tell that she'd been laying by my side, listening for hours. Penny glared up at me from a spot on the bed, as if I just interrupted her favorite movie. What? She said. I could hear you whispering from my room, so I came in last night to make sure that you were okay. It's no big deal. We're roommates, for Christ's sake. Doesn't that make us best friends? Not if you're going to sneak into my room at night and dangle your ear in front of my mouth. That's just sick. What has gotten into you? You don't seem like the kind of person who would violate me like that. And you don't seem like the kind of person who would whisper in the sleep. 
But I guess we all get lucky sometimes, don't we? I stood there, staring at her for a few moments, mouth open wider than a train tunnel, trying to decide whether or not she was being serious. However, after staring at the carnal grin plastered to her face, I noticed the goose flesh covering the skin of her arms like speed bumps. I knew that she was being dead serious. The thought that she had been lying by my side for most of the night, pleasuring herself to the sounds of my breathing and whispers, sent a wave of fear so powerful crashing over me that I felt like fleeing the apartment. Instead, I berated her so hard my cheeks turned red and made a promise that she would never watch me while I slept again, then banished her from my room and went on with my life. The rest of the semester passed smoothly. I finished my finals, met my boyfriend, and most importantly, never awoke to the sight of Penny hovering over my mouth again. But then yesterday, I noticed that there was something taped to one of the planks of my headboard. This object was right next to where my head usually rests while I sleep, and I tore it from the wood, removed the tape, and then gasped when I realized what it was. The object was a voice recorder, and the light was glowing red. I yanked the voice recorder off the wall and immediately pressed the stop button. The red light vanished as if it were a fire snuffed out by a blanket. I then pressed the menu button and my heart nearly sank to my feet when I saw the dozens of recordings stored under the device's memory card. Penny must have taped the voice recorder behind my headboard weeks ago and had been pleasuring herself to the sound of my voice in the shadows of her room ever since. A wave of disgust rolled over me like a truck. I had never felt so violated in all of my life. To think that Penny, my quiet, shy, introverted roommate, could take her ASMR obsession so far nearly sent me to my knees. I scrolled through all of the recordings and pressed play on one at random. The sound of my whispering voice greeted my ears, causing my flesh to tingle. That the recording had the intended effect on even my own skin spoke volumes to how much pleasure these recordings must have brought Penny. The carnal grin that had been plastered to her face when I awoke to find her ear hovering above my mouth as I slept two months ago popped into my mind and made me shudder. I need to put a stop to Penny's disgusting obsession once and for all. What she was doing to me was sick and neither warranted jail time or a psychiatric intervention. Before I confronted her, I needed to find out where she stashed all of her recordings. To think that all of those sound files of my sleeping voice might be stored in some flash drive stole the breath from my lungs. I needed to delete them before Penny found a way to hide them from me for good. Luckily, I had the apartment to myself that morning. Penny had class on Fridays, so I was able to sneak into her room unhindered. Her room was so tidy, it was uncanny. It was as if the entire space revolved around her tingle station. The sprawling computer desk pushed into the center of the wall, housing her desktop computer and three monitors. Why she needed three monitors to watch ASMR videos, I didn't know, and still don't to this day. I hurried over to a computer. Just as I was sitting down in the cushioned chair, I had the front door swing open in the living room. Before I even had time to blink, much less hide, Penny was standing in the doorway behind me. She must have cut her final class and came home early. Her eyes immediately noticed the voice recorder dangling from the tips of my fingers, and her face morphed from confusion to rage. I had never seen her look so angry before. The sight froze my feet to the floor. Her eyes narrowed and her cheeks started puffing with each breath that passed through her mouth. I hardly even recognized her. Long gone was the quiet girl who I'd moved in with at the start of the semester. That doesn't belong to you, said Penny, eyes glued to the recorder. And the recording saved on it don't belong to you. I can't believe you snuck this into my room. Penny, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. She ignored me. Get away from my computer, she said. 
Her voice was rushed and filled with anger. Not until I delete the recordings you have of me. I was about to finish with the phrase and contact the police, but I figured this was better thought than said. I didn't want to fill Penny with any more rage than she possessed now. It didn't matter what I said next though. For the moment after I told Penny I was going to delete her recordings, she rushed me from behind and grabbed me by the hair. Don't you dare touch my computer! She screamed in my ear. I yelled as she nearly pulled my hair from the scalp. Pain reverberated throughout my body and was only slightly masked by the adrenaline now coursing through my veins like a serum. I did my best to wheel around and pry away her hands, but it was no use. She had me trapped in the computer chair. Panic filled my lungs. I felt like the hair locked in a grasp was about to shoot from my scalp and wanted to cry at the thought of the blood that would soon be running down my back. But then I looked down at the computer stored in the desk below me and an idea immediately formed in my head. I reared back my leg as far as it would go and smashed my foot into its front. The thudding sound my shoe made as it greeted the thick plastic casing echoed throughout the room. Stop doing that, said Penny. She released my hair and went lunging at my leg, leaving me an opening for a counterattack. I reared my arm back and punched her in the back of the head. I then jumped on top of her and rammed her face repeatedly into the ground until I could see stars in her eyes. After that, I sat down on her back and berated her. What's wrong with you, Penny? I should never have moved in with you. You know that you'll get arrested for this, don't you? You'll be in a cell in the county jail before sunset. Trust me, my dad's a cop. I rammed her face into the ground one more time for good measure. Get off me, she stammered, voice breathless. No, we're going to stay like this until the police arrive. I pulled out my phone and called the police. Once I hung up, an eerie silence filled the room, broken only by the occasional shifting of our bodies. Penny was the one who finally broke this silence. Don't most of the inmates sleep in the same room at the county jail? She said. I'm pretty sure they do, yes. I said, confused by this question. Her face erupted into a carnal grin. Good. I hope they send me there. This all happened on Friday and Penny has been at the county jail ever since. I can only imagine how much fun she is having now that she has dozens of sleeping mouths at her disposal, all waiting for her ear to find under the cover of darkness so that she can rack her skin with so much tingly pleasure that the memories of her recordings of my voice, which are now deleted, will soon become distant memories in her mind.